Okay guys, so welcome to this grilling experience. Today we are going to be doing an Argentinian lamb, which is a Cordero Patagonico. Hey everyone and welcome to another Argentine Asado vlog. So I'm really, really excited about what we're going to be cooking today. Um, we are going to be cooking Cordero Patagonico, which means Argentine or Patagonian lamb. Now this is really, really exciting because we're going to be doing it outside on my fire pit, which I've showed you before, which I'm going to be showing you here in some of the photos. And we're going to be doing it vertically on uh, what we call an estaca which means basically like a cross or a support. And what this means is we're gonna be actually cooking the lamb upside down vertically and on this, uh, like this, this steel frame, which is gonna hold the meat in the right place. So it's a whole lamb. Um, this is a 13 kilo lamb. As you can see, it's pretty, uh, it's just pretty big. And um, we guess it will be taking us around four hours, so probably three hours on the bone side down, and then another hour on the other side to roast it and finally uh, have it ready for, for, for enjoying and eating. So I'm gonna show you guys now where I'm gonna be uh, preparing the fire. I've already set, just set the fire up, and uh, we're gonna go from there. I'm gonna be putting it here on the rack, and then I'm gonna be taking the rack to the fire. Now, just to remind you guys, generally, in Argentine asados or Argentine grilling methods, we are always grilling with coals under the grill. But today we are gonna be grilling with the lamb vertically upright, and we are gonna be using the heat of the flames to roast, slow roast the lamb. So stay tuned and enjoy. So as you can see, we have this rack, which is what we're gonna be using for supporting the lamb while it is roasting over the flames. Now, as you can see, the lamb here, at the moment we've opened it and we're gonna have it on the bone side down. So we, the, the, where it's gonna be roasting first is on the bone side. And from that, we are gonna always have the hind legs at the top of the frame. The reason being is the hind legs are the heaviest and this is where most of the weight is. And I always recommend you putting those legs at the top of your frame and not at the bottom because they are the heaviest. So this is where we are going to be cooking our Argentine asal today. So you can see I've got this like trailer type, wagon type fire pit. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be putting, roasting the Argentine Cordero Patagonico or Patagonian lamb over the flames. So stay tuned and enjoy. So at this given period of time, I lost connection between my audio equipment and my camera. So I'm going to have to do a voiceover clip of uh, me showing you around the estaca or the asador, which in ultimately in English means vertical spit or cross. So basically this is just like a steel frame that supports the Patagonian lamb or whatever you're gonna be cooking on that because there are multiple different meats and cuts you can do on this estaca. But really what this is, is a vertical steel frame that will hold the animal or the meat in a vertical position during the whole cooking and roasting uh, session. Now, during this grilling experience, you will notice that I have hung the Patagonian lamb upside down and it is inside the steel frame. Now, the reason why I've hung it this way is because where you have the majority of the muscle mass, the meat mass, is going to be the side you're gonna to want to have closest to the ground because that is obviously gonna be heaviest and it's where you're going to receive the majority of the heat. Now, as you see at the uh, top of the frame, um, as I'm pointing to now, is a handle. And that handle is gonna allow you to turn the frame around. And at the bottom there is like a steel rod and that is gonna go into a socket, which is going to hold the estaca or the frame in position vertically. Now, as you can see, there is these like steel sections that go across and they are holding the meat or the lamb in position. And they're clipped in with these little clips on the side that basically just hold it and create some pressure. So when we want, we can turn it around. And at this period, I have, um, in, this, in this stage of the cooking, which is going to be around three hours, uh, I've put it on the rib side down first. 
Now, once this is cooked on that side, we're gonna turn it around after three hours. We're gonna turn it around and cook it for one more hour and we're gonna roast it on the other side, which is gonna really give it this awesome, succulent, great tasting Patagonian lamb. Okay guys, so welcome to this grilling experience. Today we are going to be doing an Argentinian lamb, which is a Cordero Patagonico, and it is around 13 kilos, around 25, 26 pounds. And we have cook we're cooking it, we're going to start cooking it, and it's going to be the rib cage down, so facing the, the flames. And the heat isn't exactly directly on to the piece of meat, it's actually fractional. And um, what the reason that we've, you know, generally we cook with coals underneath the meat and today obviously we have a we have a fire that's going to be going through the whole cooking process and that is going to be roasting the meat so we're going to leave it here for around three hours and around every 30 minutes i'm going to show you guys in a minute but i'm going to be putting brine which is also known as salmuera on the uh, on the meat and that is going to help it keep moist and give it an incredible taste Okay, so the lamb has been on now for, for a few minutes and we're gonna keep it on the rib side, on the rib cage down for around three hours. And during this, this process, every 30 minutes or so, we're gonna be adding our brine to the backside and the front side of the meat. Now, I've got a handle here at the top that actually allows me to turn this around so I can access both sides. Now, if you haven't got that, it's gonna be a bit unpractical, but either way, I'm going to go and add some of this brine here to the meat and basically all I'm doing is drizzling the, the meat with this brine and really what this does is helps to keep it moist and during the cooking process the skin can <clears throat> after a few hours can get can get dry can get dry so if you add your brine it's going to give this incredible taste it's also going to keep it moist so we're going to keep the uh, the lamb here on this side for around three hours. Once we're done, we're gonna turn it around for another 45 minutes to an hour on the other side, and then it's gonna be ready for eating. Don't do this at home, guys. <laughs> Okay guys, so three hours and 30 minutes into grilling this on the rib side down, we are actually gonna turn it over. And the past like three hours we've been putting on the brine, which is the salamuera, and now we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna give it another 45 minutes. Here it goes. And it's hot. <laughs> there you go. So we're gonna give it another 45 minutes on the side, maybe, maybe a little less depending on when we see this golden color coming through here on the, on the skin, that's when we're gonna take it off. Okay, so the, uh, the lamb has been on now for four hours. We've done three hours on the rib side down and we turned it around and then we did it on the other side for around an hour and 15 minutes and it is beautiful golden color. And as I've been showing you, we've been, every 30, 40 minutes, we've been putting this brine on or this salmoida, which has really helped to keep moist. So, I've taken off the barbecue, I've still got the rack here, so I'm gonna start taking off the rack. And basically, these is what's been supporting the lamb during the whole cooking process. And what is really cool about this is that it heats up and it actually helps collectively cook whatever you're cooking on the rack. So here I'm gonna give, give this a, a little try. Let's see how this incredibly moist, so I'm looking forward to trying this. 
see how this goes. Mmm. Yeah, it's great. Juicy, and you can taste the sun weather on the skin. As you see here, I have I'm actually eating the leather or the skin from the outside, and the center is really juicy but not too rare, so it comes off the bone perfectly. And um, yeah, well, as you can see by my plate, it's 10 points. Thank you.